Hora kugoma Nyakubahwa President wa Republika bayobozi mu nzego z'igihugu cyacu banyarwanda banyarwanda kazi nitwa Lambert Bariho nkaba ndumwe mu banyamuryango ba Rwanda Leaders Fellowship akaba arije ugiye kuvuga incamake y'ibyo dushimira imana kuri uyu munsi kuri uyu munsi Abanyarwanda dufatanyije n’umwanditsi wa Zaburi y’ijana na makumyabiri na gatandatu wavuze ngo “Uwiteka yadukoreye ibikomeye natwe turishimye. Dufite impamvu yo gushimira Imana kuko mu myaka mirongo itatu ishize u Rwanda rwari mu icura burindi rikabishe ryagejeje kuri Jenoside yakorewe Abatutsi, mu gihumbi kimwe magana cyenda mirongo cyenda na kane. Ariko uyu munsi ijambo “U Rwanda ntabwo rigisobanura urupfu, ihezwa, ubupfubyi, ubwicanyi cyangwa amakimbirane. Ubi ijambo “U Rwanda risobanura kuzuka, agaciro, ibigwi, ijabo, kudaheranwa ubutwari kwigira ndetse n’ibindi byinshi muri make u Rwanda ni igisobanuro cy’ubuhamya bushya 
Turashimira Imana ku myaka mike ishize hari ibyo impuguke zavugaga ko bitashoboka bidatwaye hafi imyaka ijana ariko uyu munsi byarashobotse Gushimira Imana si ukuvuga ko urugendo rw'iterambere twarurangije ariko aho tugeze turahashimira Imana ni twarondora ubuhamya bwose bw'ibyo Imana yadukoreye tuyishimira haba mu miryango yacu haba mu matorero haba mu ngabo zacu cyangwa se mu nzego zitandukanye z'igihugu ariko icyo duhamya ni iki ngiki Imana yarahabaye Rwanda ni igihugu gifite ubuhamya mu bwiyunge no mwisana mitima ni igihugu gifite ubuhamya mu kugabanuka kw'impfu z'ababyeyi n'abana ni igihugu gifite ubuhamya mu iterambere no mu bikorwa remezo ni igihugu gifite ubuhamya mu guhangana n'ibyorezo Abatemera ko hari ubuhamya bw'ibyo Imana yakoze kandi gikorera u Rwanda rwacu baba bigiza nkana abo nabo ubwabo barabizi ko Imana yavugwaga ko itaha yirirwa handi gataha mu Rwanda ubu isigaye irutuyemo kandi ikoresha bose twishimire kandi ikoresha ubuyobozi bwiza bwacu mu kubaka iki gihugu ntabarambi mu nyemerere mbasabe dukomere imana yacu amashyi twishimira kubyo yakoze kandi yatugire neza mana aya mashyi ni wowe tuyakomeye tugushimira warakoze icyubahiro kiri cyawe imana ibaho umugisha murakoze his excellency president paul kagame and the First Lady Jeanette Kagame in absentia, Honorable Heads of Rwanda's Government Institutions, Chairperson of Rwanda Leaders Fellowship and the entire leadership of this fellowship, recognizing also the General Secretary of the Association of Evangelicals in Africa, distinguished participants, ladies, gentlemen, brothers and sisters. It's a quadruple and quintuple honor for me to be here, to be invited to speak on the 29th annual National Prayer Breakfast, one of the longest running series of National Prayer Breakfasts in the continent. The transformation of Rwanda from a broken, bleeding, and shattered nation in 1994 to the Switzerland and Singapore of Africa is a great inspiration and model of transformation that comes from serving God's people for lasting change. The areas of inspiration, development, and enduring transformation are too numerous to mention in this present uh, presentation, but I testimony of the great leadership of His Excellency President Paul Kagame and his leadership team. <laughs> Undoubtedly, over the years, this has been supported and undergirded by the power of prayer and faith of the Rwanda Leaders Fellowship and the Rwandan people. Serving God's people in our generation is God's purpose for every leader is exemplified by our reference scripture in Acts chapter 13, 36, which says, and David served God's purpose in his generation and after that he died and he was buried. In the Bible, there is no higher model or reference of kingship or leadership than King David. And yet the distinctive that is mentioned here is not about his prowess in power. It's not about his victories in battle. It's not about the passion for worship and the legacy of a forefather of the Lord Jesus Christ, but that he merely served God through people. The take-home lesson is that great leaders are identified not by title, status, position, but how they've served people as unto the Lord. Rwanda is going to hold elections this year. We hope and pray that the leadership chosen will be a leadership that has been processed, tested, and produced by tangible evidence of service to the people to serve God 
and his people in their generation. Indeed, great leaders, indeed, great leaders are processed, they are tested, and they're qualified by saving another or others. This principle plays out at time and again in the lives of men and women in the Bible, whose mark in the sense of biblical history and landscape were predicated and profiled by serving. Starting with God himself, the greatest power and authority in the universe, worked for five days to serve, aid, facilitate the highest quality of life for just one person and his descendants. This was truly serving people for lasting change. This almost mind-boggling uh, model is uh, uh, captured in the Psalms, in Psalm chapter 8, where it says, What is man that you're mindful of him, and the son of man that you should think about him? This principle of servant leadership is echoed by Jesus in Mark chapter 10 and verse 43. Whosoever will be greatest among you, whoever sh whosoever will be great among you shall be a servant, and whoever will be chief shall be the servant of all. Thus there is a servant, then there is a great servant, and there is a chief servant. A great servant must exemplify the following A-level or high-level qualities, ability, the ability to execute or perform responsibilities. I think it was Martin Luther King Jr. who said this, there's nothing as dangerous as conscientious incompetence and diligent stupidity. And so, as we pursue the attributes of being a servant, the ability is important. Attitude, aptitude, attention, accountability, answerability for actions, availability, being present and reliable, adaptability, being able to be flexible to change and to be relevant to the situation. Servant leadership requires more than just being busy and being there. There are numerous examples of great leaders in the Bible whose trajectory and CV of greatness required them to serve people. These include Moses, who served as a shepherd for 40 years. Joseph, who served in Potiphar's house, in the prison, and in the palace. We have already mentioned David. Ruth, who became a history maker as she served in the fields of Boaz. Rebecca, who saved the way into the genealogy of Jesus. The nameless Shunammite woman, whose service to Elisha broke the stranglehold of barrenness and brought a lasting change in the form of a child. The list of examples in the Bible is inexhaustible, but the biblical imperative of servant leadership is indisputable. Many of these leaders, my brothers and sisters, served as politicians, bureaucrats, business people, and other marketplace callings, and not in the usual defined religious settings. And I'm glad that many are represented in this house today. It is a clear principle that leadership in the Bible is serving God through serving people. The Bible says, if any man says I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he, he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? First John chapter 4 and verse 20. Serving the intangibility of God requires us to serve the tangibility of mankind. Serving the perfection of God requires us to serve the imperfections of mankind. Serving the sufficiency of God requires us to serve the insufficiencies, insufficiencies of mankind. Serving, seeking the forgiveness of God demands us to seek and to give forgiveness to mankind. Forgive us as we forgive others. This, I think we have seen being exemplified here in Rwanda. Jesus said these words in Matthew 25 and verse 35. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you as a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed you, or sick in prison and came to me? And he will answer and say, as much as you did it to these, the least of my brothers, you did it to me. There is no clearer proof, my brothers and sisters, that to truly serve God is to serve people. 
This verse speaks of God, of people providing water, sanitation to those without, clothing the naked, giving dignity and hope to the poor and vulnerable, visiting prisoners, bringing opportunity for redemption, transformation and reintegration. To serve God, we have to serve people. The reason why this is important and imperative to serve mankind is that mankind is an expression of God himself. Mankind is made in the image of God. There cannot be a democratic principle of equality without an understanding that we are made in the value and in the image of God. This is the birthplace of human dignity and equality, often expressed as egalite, fraternite, liberté. It's the basis of how we value, we treat and serve people regardless of ethnicity, of race, of background. It is indeed the basis of modern day democracy and the societies we see, and in particular, the society I see here in Rwanda. This is why the Bible says, do not forget or negligent or be negligent to be hospitable to strangers because some have hosted angels without realizing it, in Hebrews chapter 13. So in God's eyes, everyone is a neighbor. To serve my neighbor is to serve God. In God's eyes, strangers are a representative of God. To serve God whom we have not seen, we have to serve people that we live with on a daily basis. The Bible tells us the story of the exact opposite of servant leadership. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 45, of a servant who was put in charge of others, but when his master was away, he began to beat the other servants, to squander the wealth of his master, and to live a life of debauchery. The master, on his return, condemned his actions by punishing him with death. Servant leadership is not just a facilitation of service and effective public delivery, but the accountability, stewardship over people, over possessions. We could call it environment, over places, and the property and values that we should have. Regrettably, in the world today and in Africa, we are seeing many com convoluted and confused models and values of leadership. We are seeing the demonstration of what I call the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. Instead of serving others, we are seeing honesty, decency, dignity, and discipline being auctioned and traded for short term and not long-term lasting change. I got a concept note from the Rwanda Leadership Forum, and he said, today, the world is facing serious social, economic, governance challenges, including climate change, global migration, spiritual emptiness, wars, hunger, and poverty. Africa is not exempt from these, and yet Africa has so much potential. Africa has some of the greatest potential of any continent in the world. It is no lack of sunshine in Africa. There's no lack of strong and, uh, 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 leadership in Africa. There's no lack of so resources in Africa. We have abundant resources in human beings. Perhaps that is where we should start, serving one another, developing one another. And Africa will come out of the labels. Africa will come out of the designations that it has been given for, uh, to, for a long time. If we serve God with conscientious ability in regard to Africa's people, Africa's resources, and Africa's values. Whatever we do, the Word of God says, whatever you work with, do it as unto the Lord. I pray that Rwanda may continue to raise godly servants and to raise people that will be contributors to the great transformation that still lies ahead. We have already seen so much transformation in this country, and yet I believe that the best is yet to come. I believe that this cannot be the end. I believe that the models that we have seen here in Rwanda can be replicated everywhere, including in my own country. And we, are, we stand here in Africa, proud of what Rwanda has achieved. From where you were, from the bleeding, uh, from the hurting, from the broken situation that Rwanda was. It is now a place that we can all be proud of in Africa. It's a place where many people have come to learn lessons. 
of a how to come from the abyss of division and death to the place where we are a, a, a name to be reckoned with. Our belief, our prayer, is that the trajectory of Rwanda will continue. Our belief and our prayer is that we will learn in Africa, indeed as we must learn, that it's not always a matter of resources, because Rwanda is always known, is not always known for the multitude of resources it has. But it is one resource that it has taken and developed, the resources of people, the resources of leadership, the resources of serving one another. It is these things that are evidence in the model in Rwanda, that serving God is serving people, that the transformation really lies in the people that we have. It does not always lie in materiality, in technology, it will come. But the main thing we must do first is to serve our own people, develop our own people, treasure our own people, because those are the resources that God gave us, the resources that we had in the Garden of Eden. Our prayer today is that God will continue to bless the leadership of His Excellency President Paul Kagame and others that God will continue to bless those who are here who serve in your various callings. You don't have to be a pastor, you don't have to be clergy, you don't have to be a preacher, but you can serve God as uh, David did by serving his generation, where he was as a politician, as a leader, or uh, Nehemiah, where he was a bureaucrat, or Daniel, some of the greatest, most amazing prophetic uh, transformations that we have in the Bible with the result of Daniel, a bureaucrat and a technocrat in the government of Nebuchadnezzar. May God raise, continue to raise. May God continue to uplift. May God continue to anoint in Rwanda and in Africa such leadership that will be used of God to transform our continent. May God bless you as you begin 2024. I pray that uh, God will begin to use you and that you're not going to put off the responsibility of serving God and other people to other people, and that it will begin with you, it will begin with me, so that we can lay a legacy for future generations. God bless you, God bless Rwanda, God bless Africa, thank you. Yakuba wa President wa Republika, wayo wazi munzego, muruzi jihugu chatu, Banyarwanda mukurikiranye aya masengesho nshuti z'u Rwanda mwaturutse mu bihugu bitandukanye muhawe ikaze kandi mbifurije umwaka mwiza wa 2024 Turasaba imana ngo uyu mwaka kuri twese uzabe umwaka w'umugisha kandi umwaka wo gukora akazi kanoze aho dukorera hose tugatera imbere mu Rwanda mu izina ry'umuryango Rwanda Leaders Fellowship utegura aya masengesho ya National Prayer Breakfast turabashimiye mwese kuba mwitabiriye ubutumire gacu nyakubaho wa president wa Republika byumwe hariko nagira ngo mu izina y'abateraniye hano twese tubashimire cyane ko mwaje kwifatanya natwe muri aya masengesho nanone ndashaka gushimira cyane abashitsi inshuti z'u Rwanda zaturutse mu bihugu bitandukanye baje gufatanya n'abanyarwanda gushima imana i want to extend a special and warm welcome to our international guests friends of Rwanda who have traveled from various countries to come and be with us at this national prayer breakfast. As I mentioned, your country kindly stand uh, for recognition. Bene. Uh, Botswana. Ethiopia, Gabon, Kenya,
Nigeria, South Sudan, Tanzania, Uganda, USA, and Zimbabwe. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Rwanda Leaders Fellowship no muryango wa Gikristo ufite intego yo kwimakaza indangagaciro zishingiye ku ijambo ry'Imana mu miyoborere yacu instilling godly values in leadership. Dutegura ibikorwa bitandukanye bihuza abayobozi hagamijwe gusengera igihugu n'abayobozi mu nzego zitandukanye gushimira Imana kubyagezweho kwiragiza imigambi yose y'igihugu ndetse no kwiga inyigisho z'ijambo ry'Imana kubijyanye n'ubuyobozi bwiza aya masengesho y'uyu munsi afite insanganya matsiko igiriti serving god's people for lasting change ngenekereje mu kinyarwanda no gukorera abantu b'Imana ugamije impinduka zirambye dufite umwigisha mwiza Reverend Dr Goodwill Shana umuyobozi wa International Council of World Evangelical Alliance ihuriro ry'amatorero yivuga butumwa kwisi akaba numushumba mukuru witorero Word of Life International Ministries yatangije muri Bulawayo Zimbabwe araza kudufasha gusobanukirwa byimbitse insanganya matsiko nk'abanyarwanda turashima imana kuko tuzi neza aho tuvuye tuzi aho tugeze naho tugana kuba uyu munsi dufite umutekano twiteze imbere kandi dufite umudendezo gusenga biduha ibyiringiro bya hejo hazaza ibi byose turabishimira imana tukanashimira ubuyobozi bwiza budukunda burangajwe imbere nawe nyakuba wa president wa republic mbere yuko nsoza nagira ngo nshimire cyane abadutera inkunga mu buryo butandukanye tukabasha gukora uyu murimo ukenera amikoro n'imbaraga nyinshi ndashimira cyane abanyamuryango ba Rwanda Leaders Fellowship ndetse nabakwera bushake badufasha gutegura iki gikorwa uwiteka imana azabahe umugisha abarinde uwiteka abamurikirishe cyishize masohe abagirire neza uwiteka abarebe neza abahe amahoro nyakuba wa president wa republika sinasoza ntabashimiye byumwe hariko uburyo muzirikana iki gikorwa mukitabira ubutumire bwacu ni inkunga ikomeye cyane kuri uyu murimo dukora impanuro Imanuro nziza mwagiye mutugezaho muri prayer breakfast zatambutse turazizirikana tukavomamwo imbaraga zo guhangana nibiduhiga murakoze cyane amahoro asabe mu banyarwanda murakoze Yeah. 